There have been several saber-toothed cats in the Earth's history, but none is alive today. Except for the very earliest forms, they were all related to the phalids, but had features that were largely dissimilar from today's big cats. Most notably, they had short, stumpy tails, a thick, stocky build, and of course, their characteristic and unique elongated canine teeth. Here, we discuss the characteristics of saber-toothed cats and suggest what may have happened to them and why they became extinct. Macarodontini is an extinct subfamily of cats that contained many of the well-known saber-toothed cats. It is a completely separate lineage from today's Pantherini and Felidae. The name saber-toothed cat is given to any one of several cat-like mammals that exhibited elongated canines. The earliest known species of saber-toothed mammal has recently been described as Diego Alurus venvolkenbergae. Based on fossil records, this animal is dated back to the Eocene epoch. It was around 40 million years before the more famous saber-toothed tiger and was the first example of a hypercarnivore, existing on a diet made up entirely of meat. Other mammals are strict carnivores like polar bears and tigers, but over 40 million years ago, this was unusual. This animal, which was small and similar in size to a fossa, evolved serrated teeth enabling it to slice through flesh. It became extinct at the end of the Eocene, along with many more primitive species. Likely, this mass extinction event was caused by climate change, as Antarctica froze over and disrupted ocean currents changing the temperature of the globe dramatically. When these saber-toothed mammals became extinct, their niche was filled by the Nimravids, a family of saber-toothed animals related to phalids. Megantyrian was a heavy, stocky jaguar-like animal that likely gave rise to other saber-toothed cats. The oldest recorded fossils of this fearsome beast have been dated back to 5 to 7 million years ago, which would put them in the late Miocene era. These fossils are the oldest of their kind and were found in Kenya and Chad, suggesting an African origin of the saber-toothed cats. It weighed an average of 120 kilograms and lived in Africa, Eurasia, and North America. In the late Pliocene, Megantyrian evolved into the North American Smilodon. However, it survived in East Africa until one and a half million years ago and in Eurasia until about 500,000 years ago, where it lived alongside Homo erectus. Evidence from hominid fossils tells us that Homo erectus came under attack from these saber-toothed predators, although they may not have been considered typical prey. The Smilodons that inhabited the Americas included Smilodon gracilis, Smilodon fatalis, and Smilodon populator. They varied in size, but the largest was considerably bigger than their Megantyrian ancestor. The smallest was Smilodon gracilis, which weighed up to 100 kilograms or 220 pounds, and the largest was Smilodon populador. This was an impressive beast of enormous proportions, weighing up to 430 kilograms or 960 pounds. This saber-toothed cat stood at 1.2 meters or 47 inches tall. These prehistoric felines were ambush predators. They likely inhabited bushland and forests to help conceal them from prey. Their muscular forelimbs were used to clinging onto animals whilst they delivered fatal bites to the animal's neck and back of the head. Some predators from the same period survived and still exist today. So why did the saber-toothed cats become extinct? Why are there none alive today? From fossil records, it has been determined that saber-toothed cats lived in the Pleistocene epoch, which ran from 2.5 million years ago to 10,000 years ago. Smilodon gracilis lived in North America, in the very north. There were great mammoth steppes and open plains. Prey species were abundant and included woolly mammoths, ground sloths, mastodons, and bison. But competition is likely to have been fierce. Other predators included dire wolves, American lions, 
and short-faced bears, whilst other saber-toothed cats included Homotherium and Xenosmilus, which likely filled a similar niche to Smilodon. With competition for food, habitat, and space, Smilodon gracilis migrated southwards, away from the mammoth steppe, and towards a more tropical climate in the mid-Pleistocene. Here, it is likely this prehistoric predator gave rise to Smilodon fatalis and Populador. Their geographical ranges were separated by the Andes. Homotherium was another saber-toothed cat that existed for approximately 4 million years. It diverged from Smilodon 18 million years ago and was still living 28,000 years ago in Europe. Fossils found in Venezuela suggest that, like Smilodon, they traveled from North to South America during the Great American Species Interchange. Homotherium fossils are less common than Smilodon. They likely inhabited different habitats. Their physical characteristics suggest they hunted in more open habitats than Smilodon and were pursuit predators rather than relying on ambushing their prey. They were more slender and less bulky, and it is thought they were diurnal, hunting during daylight hours. They seemed to be adapted to higher altitudes, so when climate change began to warm towards the end of the last ice age, they struggled to survive. Their prey species, which included the elephant-like dinotherium and young mammoths, were amongst the megafauna that became extinct, contributing to Homotherium's demise. But was the extinction of prey really the reason for saber-toothed cats becoming extinct? For years, it has been the assumption that the mass extinction of America's large herbivores towards the end of the Pleistocene led to the starvation of its big predators. The popular belief was that the changing climate resulted in significant changes to vegetation, affecting the populations of herbivorous giants like the woolly mammoths. As these prey species declined, so too did predators like the American lion and saber-toothed cats. Evidence that led to this conclusion included analyses of fossilized teeth. The teeth of American lions and saber-toothed cats were often broken and fractured. Scientists, therefore, suggested that times were tough and, as prey became less abundant towards the end of the last ice age, predators were forced to eat more of the carcass, chomping down on the bone. Consuming the bones caused a lot more damage to the predator's teeth. But new research has contradicted this belief. When scientists used dental microware texture analysis, they came to a different conclusion. They looked at the microscopic grooves on the dental surfaces and found that they were in keeping with an entirely meat-based diet. None had the extreme microware the modern-day hyenas have. The American lion's teeth were similar to today's African lions, which exhibit some bone crushing but predominantly eat meat. The saber-toothed cat teeth were more like today's cheetahs, which deliberately avoid bone. The likely cause of the broken and fractured teeth found in numerous fossil specimens was the hunting technique of these prehistoric cats. Scientists explained that smaller predators like foxes can grip prey with their teeth seven times as heavy as themselves before their teeth break. Larger species like lions can grip prey four times their own weight, while saber-toothed cats can only capture prey twice their weight before risking tooth breakage. So, larger teeth are more prone to breaking than smaller ones. This explains why the fossilized teeth of some of the largest mammalian predators the world has ever known are often broken. But conclusions from this recent research still don't answer the question. Why did the saber-toothed cats become extinct? Why are there no saber-toothed cats nowadays? especially when other species like the mountain lion lived on. For now, most accept that these great predators experienced a range of different pressures at the epic boundaries that probably all contributed to their demise. These pressures came from a growing human population that would have competed for space and prey. More pressures came from a changing climate that changed the landscape and the environment. This resulted in habitat loss and at least, effects on prey abundance. Sadly, the saber-toothed cat lineage died out completely. There are no living descendants from the saber-toothed cats. Today's felines have evolved from an entirely different ancestral lineage. 
But could saber-toothed cats live nowadays, even if they had survived the transition from the Pleistocene into the Holocene? Probably not. There is a reason these apex predators didn't make it. They were less adaptable than those species that did survive. South America's jaguar shrunk in size, adapting to life in dense forests. Wolves evolved to hunt in packs, enabling them to take down large prey. Bears adapted to survive on a wide and varied diet, eating berries and vegetation when meat is hard to come by. The niches that saber-toothed cats once thrived in are now filled by more successful species. Today's world is very different from the world in which saber-toothed cats lived. Space is more limited, prey is smaller and less abundant, and the global climate has changed. Scientists are still striving to discover why animals like saber-toothed cats went extinct. They are still analyzing the evidence left behind from times gone by. Maybe one day we will find out the exact cause of these extinctions, but we may never find all the answers we are looking for. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time.